Just a physical look at the uh, installation of the Digimax Lite kit channel kit board, which is reliant on the um, RR824106 version 1.0 um, PLL adapter board in this case. So um, that kit, that um, Digimax kit, will not be able to be obviously fitted into these radios because the UPD2824 PLL is ROM 40 channel locked. So we uh, obviously I designed this uh, PLL adapter board to be able to connect a MC145106 PLL in there. Um, so just to have a look, um, obviously while it's installed, that's the uh, ribbon cable going to the PLL adapter board, and this top one here is the one that's going to the rotary encoder and the channel display. So if we remove this Digimax Lite kit, I've already pre-undone the screws so that it's easy to just to show for this video but normally they're all mounted in by here. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. I don't know, it's not much of a zoom in, but for what it's worth. So most of the wiring is done by these little headers going into the position of the old UPD2824. So pretty much everything is just pre-configured pre wired in, inside the PCB and just goes through that ribbon cable straight to the Digimax light. But these are the only three wires you have to worry about. Uh, squelch, power, and PTT just to be able to get those special functions like scan or split RXCX and yeah look that's pretty much it so you need that installed in there that basically communicates all the data that's required with the Digimax Lite and when that's all wired in and configured and obviously the radio is broadbanded and a few other modifications to the VCO um, yep that's it that's, that's pretty much all the hardware there Alright, full power there at minus channels. And watching the SDR screen, and I'll scroll to 26 megahertz window so you can see it scrolling forward. Practically full power all the way up to all channel. Where are we now? 100, 120, 130, 40, and all the way back, and it only dips right at that edge. There you go. Alrighty, here we've just got a quick demo of um, this. AX144 being Digimax liked on um, receive and uh, just the frequency response and it's not a really really serious test with the audio output through watching the dB levels I'm, it's just a bit of quick reference so you can just kind of see a rough idea of how it responds so um, okay start off with channel line is 58 so um, S meter reading of approximately 1 going up in chan 10 channel steps about S meter reading of 1, about 2 about 3 
three again three again three 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 staying on three yep three a little bit above three at the moment yeah, maybe you could say, I don't know, 3.25. Yeah, about 3.25 maybe. Yeah, 3.25. Maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, probably closer to 3.5 there. Probably close to 3.75 now. Yep. Okay, dipping back to 3.5, maybe 3.25, down to a 3, uh, uh, about a 2.75, and it, it won't receive past that, the VCO just dies out. Uh, it's about, I don't know, 210, 215 channels, whatever it is, but anyway. There you go. It's not too bad. Receives. All right. All right. Here's a, just a demo video of the setting up of Digimax Light Kit uh, software-wise or setup menu-wise for um, this unit in X144. All right. So <coughs> generally, um, going through the button presses. So if you move your channel to wherever, turn it off. Turn it back on, it will always return to whatever channel you last were set at. If you use one button press, and home channel is 35 in this one, so it'll take it to. Yep, 35, obviously some activity there. Um, <coughs> double press is when you have squelch high enough, um, so it cuts out the signal. Uh, there is a little dot in the corner of the window there, but. The AX144 window is not big enough, so you can really see it properly, but there is a little LED that lights up in the bottom right-hand corner anyway. So, squelch is closed. Double tap. And I'll start scanning. Obviously, for those channels, should be upper side band, but anyway, you can change the direction of the scan by just altering the direction of the rotary encoder. And just let it go around, and then back into lower side and then whenever you wish you either come across a channel that's got activity let's see what happens to 35 no, missed it or open squelch or tap the tap the button once and it'll stop scanning as well um, <coughs> so next up is the split split channel function those that want to use um, um, uh, twin or dual channel simplex chats or uh, experimenting, experimenting with the repeater idea. But anyway, for now, it's just dual channel simplex chats. One, two, three. Split menu, channel. How many channels do you want the split to be a part by? Like, I don't know, 20, 20 channels, 10 channels, whatever. You know, maybe 11 just to do something different. And when you TX, do you want that channel to go 11 channels higher than the RX or 11 channels lower than the RX? I don't know, let's try lower just for something different. And if you're somewhere, I don't know, receiving at channel 46, then you go to transmit with a. It'll go down to 35. Because that's 11 channels lower, of course. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so just got one more, maybe to 47, so transmit should be 36. Yep, and that'll work. So it'll, it'll keep doing that, it'll keep tracking that distance across wherever you go, so I don't know. Oh, there are some limitations down lower, um, <clears throat> but um, generally speaking, there you go. That's pretty cool. To disengage um, split RX TX, you just just press once and it obviously lets you know off. Um, and then finally, the setting up of the uh, <coughs> the actual setting of the Digimax light is four button press one, two, three, four. PL 
where um, 106, obviously because that's why the adapter board, MC145106 PLL, ENCODE still stays the same with all these radios that use a 15360 local oscillator against a 10.695, it's always 91 because that's just the maths for the antenna to be 26965 at channel 1 when you do the maths. Uh, and this radio happens to be squelch high for it to be the correct logic home channel, um, <clears throat> whatever you wish. Um, I'll, I'll make it 35 because that's just, that's just the most useful, useful channel. And then the cool feature is, um, just undo the antenna when we do the auto lock detect, um, is that it'll automatically listen to the lock detect line from the PLL and only give you the channels to scroll and run through that actually have a positive or successful lock on the PLL. In other words, there's no point scrolling from channels minus maybe 91 till 91 plus 511, whatever that is, like 300 or something, because you're not going to hear anything there anyway because the PLL is not functioning. So on and then press once. Okay, over 100. Sometimes it gets different results. So we're... Oh yeah, 150, 151 or something in the positive direction. And then let's just see how far down it scrolls into the negative channels. Oh yeah, about negative 52 or something like that. Anyway. There you go, gives you an idea of how, how it runs anyway.